In this problem, we have a collision between two masses, and then the resulting velocity is v1 and v2, and then we need to show that v2 must be perpendicular to 2v1 plus v2. And then, essentially, that claim is equivalent to proving that the dot product between v2 and 2v1 plus v2 is equal to zero. So just remember that both of these expressions are vectors. So all we have to do is just to prove this dot product here. So let's just start off with a diagram of what exactly is going on. So originally we have a mass of m and it's moving at some initial velocity, let's call that v0, so this is a vector. And then this mass is stationary. And then they're going to collide, and after the collision, both of these masses are going to shoot off in different velocities. So the mass uh, with mass m, it's going to shoot off with velocity v1. The mass with mass 2m is going to shoot off with velocity v2. So uh, we're going we're gonna to try to set up some equations with the expressions that we have here. So the first obvious expression we can set up is momentum. So mass times velocity, the initial mass times velocity, is equal to the final mass times velocity. And then obviously we can take away the n on both sides, it's just a scalar. So this is the first relationship that we have. Now the second relationship we can do, uh, we can come up with is using energy because we know that uh, the collision is elastic. So in this case this is a magnitude or you can say that this is a dot product between the vectors themselves. So v squared plus one half and v1 squared plus one half two m v2 squared. So obviously we can cross away that one half m and then in the end we get v0 square is equal to v1 square plus 2v2 square. So we have these two relationships here. And let's try to combine them and let's try to take away v0 because in our original problem v0, the initial velocity, does not feature in the problem. So let's try to get rid of v0 first. So first of all, let us just copy down what we, what we know at this point. So we know this is true. And then we also know that this is true, so maybe I should get a bit of the arrow. Plus 2v2 squared. And then now I'm going to take the square of, bo uh, of both sides of the top equation. So when I'm taking the square, that means I'm taking the expression uh, and I'm taking the dot product of that expression with itself. So on the left hand side is just v squared because two dot, pro dot products of the same vector is just the magnitude of the vector squared. And then here we have v1 dot v1, which is just v1 squared. And then we have 2v2 dot v1. And then we have a v1 dot 2v2. And then we have two v2s that are going to dot each other. Each other. So in the end, this is all. This is just going to turn up to something like this. So this is just v1 squared. This is equal to 4v2 squared. And then you can shift the order of the dot product. So in the end, we have 4v1 dot v2. And then you might find some similarity with the expression that we have over here, because both of these have a v0 squared. So we know that this left-hand side here is also equal to this expression, v1 squared plus 2v2 squared. So immediately you see we can cross these out, and then for the 2v2 squares we can get rid of two of them. So in the end we have 0 is equal to 2v2 squared plus 4v1 dot v2. So we're almost, we're essentially almost done, so with just a little bit of rearrangement we'll get our answer. So we're up to the point where we found out that 2v2 squared plus 4v1 dot v2 is equal to 0. And then once again, v2 squared is just v2 dot v2, right? And then we can just pull the v2 out, and then we can also pull the 2 out because it's just a scalar. And then we'll have v2 plus 2v1. So you see that I pulled, pulled out two v2s 
uh, from both of these expressions. And then you get something like this. And so if you take away the 2, you see that the vector v2 dot the vector uh, 2v1 plus v2 is always equal to 0. So these two vectors are orthogonal to each other. They're perpendicular. And essentially, we're, we're done because we've proven this claim. And so we know that v2 must always be per perpendicular to 2v1 plus v2.